Thank you for listening to the Bladder Battle Podcast special series, I See in the Dark. This series dives deep into the perplexing disease, interstitial cystitis. This podcast is intended to bring awareness and create conversation around the illness by providing possible remedies, tips for managing the disease, how you can show support, and so much more. This podcast is not intended to be a medical alternative for physician care, nor to treat, cure, or prevent any illness or disease. Always consult with a physician for professional medical advice. Today, we are discussing a therapeutic method for coping and how it can be beneficial for those with interstitial cystitis. So joining me today is hypnotherapist Audrey Holleher with Wasatch, hypnotherapy. So Audrey, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for taking your time to be on here today. Absolutely, Lauren. Thank you for inviting me on your show. I really appreciate it. And I'm really excited to be here this morning. Absolutely. So I'm very interested in learning more about this topic because I haven't experienced uh, hypnotherapy myself. So I think this is a very interesting and very needed topic that I think can really help a lot of people um, with any sort of, you know, pain or stress uh, in their life. So why don't you kind of start with your personal story with IC and kind of your background on that? I'd love to. Yes. So as uh, Probably very similar, um, perhaps, Lauren, to even your story and the story of your listeners. So I'm not unique in that it took a long time to get diagnosed with uh, interstitial cystitis, bladder pain syndrome. That's the bucket diagnose I received in 2015. Uh, but that was after uh, at least a decade of worsening and more frequent UTIs. Uh, so that's where it started with me. Um, as far as symptoms, I don't know how far back it actually began. I don't think I'll probably ever know that. Uh, there wasn't really any smoking gun in terms of an injury or things that I could um, attribute to that could have caused it or anything like that. Um, that can be the case for some folks. So it just really was a uh, series of UTIs that eventually get to the negative UTI, which is kind of a known signal now for interstitial cystitis. Right. Uh, so it took a long time. Um, and I had to go through several um, physicians uh, from, a, you know, a urologist to a urogynecologist um, who didn't really appreciate the condition. Um, so that was a struggle. Um, and I finally found a very, very good urogynecologist. I was in Illinois at the time. Uh, who understood the signs and symptoms and even gave me the sheet about how um, ICBPS is now diagnosed. So as far as the diagnosis um, in 2015, it was very helpful to find her because the urogyne got me in touch with the pelvic floor therapist. And that was a huge turning point for me. Uh, the I call her the bladder whisperer. Uh, she <laughs> Wonderful. And I can provide her information um, offline too for your um, audience if that's helpful. So, yeah, she was um, very attuned to what was happening internally, um, found kind of the mechanical issue that was causing it, uh, and uh, so on. So, that was really a turning point. But what I did at that time, this is before my hypnotherapy training, before it was um, something in my mind yet. Uh, I had seen many different practitioners at the time, and I think the um, putting all the puzzle pieces together from an acupuncturist to uh, she was also a doctor of oriental medicine, so remedies, acupuncture, chiropractic, pelvic floor therapy for sure, uh, distillations with my urogyne. I did everything. I wanted to get better right. as quickly as possible. Yeah, so I am I advocate use all your tools, all your resources. So at the time, hypnotherapy wasn't a resource for me, um, but it had been on my mind to do training uh, for a while. Um, and in the um, my background really started with uh, hypnotherapy and learning about hypnotic language patterns in late 90s. Um, I studied neuro-linguistic programming, NLP, and that uh, is modeled after uh, people in uh, systems theory and family therapy and Milton Erickson, who was considered the pioneer in medical hypnosis. 
So in the late 70s, uh, he was modeled for his practices, uh, which came to be known as hypnotic language patterns. And I just fell in love with those. I love to write. I love language. Uh, to create a really short story, I moved um, into the marketing advertising space and eventually into market research. Um, using visualization. So I've been using hypnotic language patterns to understand people's emotional connections um, in the branding, innovation, and consumer insight space. So the hypnotic language patterns, really understanding how people think, how they map their world based on their perceptions, and how those perceptions become reality, have uh, been in my mindset for over 20 years. And that's how I first got exposed to this practice. Uh, so I eventually decided I really wanted to study more. And that's how I researched and came to the Hypnotherapy Academy of America in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and went through training in 2018. Wow, that's very interesting. Um, I have a degree in advertising, marketing. So it's interesting that you were utilizing hypnotherapy to really understand kind of consumer behavior and insights. Um, it's a very important thing that I felt like was actually missed in my education, the psychology and just understanding how people mm. react to certain visuals and wording and, you know, how one can really brand themselves. So that's a very interesting twist on it. And I think that's, you know, really incredible that that then led you into wanting to learn more. So can you kind of tell us, you know, exactly what hypnotherapy is? I can for sure. And it's from direct experience. So and it's directly related, <clears throat> excuse me, to ICBPS. So I'm in training in 2018. And on day two, I have a flare. And as you know, that can be a devastating experience when you have things you want to do, want to move on with life, right? Right. <laughs> I'm in a highly intensive program, in-person, classroom, 9 to frequently 6 or even 6.30 p.m. at night with several hours of work at home, home study, uh, and uh, weekend uh, meetings every other weekend with study groups. So this is an intensive program. It's day two. I've got a pile of books in front of me, manuals I need to get through. And I know all the signs. It's hitting me. Um, so I have a flare day two and all that emotional distress of a flare uh, that comes up for me. Uh, of What am I going to do? How am I going to get to an uh, emergency room? How am I going to drive? Because I'm on the floor. Uh, right. nauseated oh. and in pain. Yeah. And there's no one there. I've moved to Albuquerque temporarily to go 10 weeks straight through the program. So I don't have anyone <laughs> to, yeah. to, uh, to rely on. And right. um, I really want to get, get back to my health as quickly as possible. And I know that a flare can last for, for me several, several days until I get um, some antibiotics and, and pain medication. Uh, which I was on my last um, supply of. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, and, and I was all fired, but I was still traveling with it. You know, we all have our emer emergency little kit, right? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, and then my um, finally my cognitive brain starts kicking in, and I'm going to speak more about that um, through the distress. And I realize um, after connecting my school, telling them what's happening, and I did miss a few days. I realized, wait a minute, I'm surrounded by professional hypnotherapists. Not only that, I chose the school because it provides certification in something very special called Certified Medical Support Clinical Hypnotherapist. What that means is uh, these folks are trained especially to handle pain and ailments. It requires special training. It's another module entirely. Uh, and that's what I intended to do myself, become certified as a medical uh, support hypnotherapist. So I realize I'm surrounded by support and help. So I sign up for sessions immediately with my own hypnotherapist, who's a coach in the program and also is the hypnotherapist that uh, did all the interviews for the overactive bladder study, which at this point in 2018 is still ongoing. This oh, wow. is the other reason I chose my school. This is why I chose a school, because they were involved in a study that really spoke to my heart and my experience. You know, I have, uh, I don't have overactive bladder, but I see is related and mine looked a lot like overactive bladder at first and felt like it. 
Um, so this was the hook for me to join this program. So here I have the opportunity to um, have a professional hypnotherapy session with uh, Christian Raphael is the one who handled many of the interviews in the study. He gets it. He understands pelvic health. Uh, so I start with him. And Lauren, after just one session and doing my self-practice at home, which I'll speak to what that looks like too, my emotions calm down. Wow. And when the emotions calm down, uh, the pain calms down. So, so let me um, address that quickly. So with hypnotherapy, what you're doing is you're learning to activate the, the parasympathetic nervous system. This is our relaxed and safe state. This is really the power behind meditation, prayer, mindfulness, hypnotherapy. In a nutshell, what you're doing is learning to use your mind to affect your physiology in a positive way. And that's what helped me immediately. Of course, I still take the medications. I uh, still do my pelvic floor therapy exercises at home. I do everything I possibly can, use all my tools. But now I have this tool to handle the emotional distress, which I didn't have before very well. Um, the emotional distress for me exasper exacerbated my symptoms. Oh, because when absolutely. We, yeah, and I'm, I'm sure your audience can, can uh, understand that. So pain begins in the brain. That doesn't mean it's not real, but that's where it begins. We get that signal that something's wrong. And that signal comes from a trigger. You know, a, uh, you know, you touch the hot stove and it goes right to your brain. Don't do that. Um, and it's protective, right? Uh, the problem is when uh, we start anticipating pain and we get into the fear, pain, anxiety cycle. Hypnotherapy, learning to uh, practice self-hypnosis to calm your mind and affect your physiology and go into that relaxed state, that's really the power to nip that cycle in the bud. Once you understand how to do that, you are empowered in your own health. You are so empowered. And I felt that immediately. I felt so much more in control because the flare for me really took away my control. And it's something that I really want to get across to people is that when you have that little bit of power back, that you can calm yourself down and affect your physiology. It doesn't mean everything went away immediately, but it calmed to the point where I could now deal with it and use the rational part of my brain too, instead of just the emotional part of distress. Um, so that's the power is that by affecting your thoughts, affect your physiology. So what you're doing in hypnotherapy is you're learning to go into that safe state at will more and more quickly. And that flare state, the anxiety state, that's the stress state. That's the sympathetic nervous system taking over. And that's where our pain gets even worse. And it's even proven in studies over time um, that as we wire that connection over and over again, that distress and the pain, it actually can increase your perception of pain. So it, if it seems like your flares are getting worse and worse, like mine did, um, that can very well be in fact, happening. You know, I can 100% relate. Uh, I used to say before I even knew that I had IC that my symptoms were coming on because of stress. And I actually remember my first urologist telling me that, you know, stress cannot cause pain. And I thought that was just ridiculous because I really think it does. And you just explained it to me. So, I mean, that's really incredible. And um, yeah, being able to control yes, your yeah. Um, yeah. state of mind so that you don't feel like you're trapped, you know, can just move you forward. You might still have the symptoms, you might still have the pain. But if you feel like you're in control, that's just like the beginning of being able to heal and just have a more positive mindset going forward. And I think that everyone with any sort of autoimmune illness and I see any sort of pain can really relate to that feeling trapped in your in your mind. Um, you know, how do you move forward? How do you go forward from there? Uh, if you don't think that you can, being able to control your mind is so important. So 
I'm just so glad we're diving into this topic. You know, incredible with your story that you were surrounded by a clinical hypnotherapist that could really help you uh, during a time where it's hard for us to like go to school and work and do things. You know, whenever a flare comes up, it makes it really difficult to carry on. So you were kind of in the perfect situation there. And that's, you know, very fortunate. Um, but I'm sure you learned a lot. Uh, you know, by by having an experience needing to actually go through sessions while you're being trained, a really like hands on experience there. So it's very incredible. So I, I definitely want to, you know, kind of get into more of what a hypnotherapy session would kind of look like and how that even works, because I think a lot of people haven't right. really dived into this method of therapy. Yes, yes, absolutely. So most people do ask me, well, what is it? How does hypnotherapy work? So let's let's get a little bit of background real quick, just to ground. So uh, think of the mind as three minds, the conscious mind, the subconscious mind and the super conscious mind. So in hypnotherapy, uh, you are actually, it's the application of self-hypnosis, which is just that mind-body relaxed state. That's all hypnosis is, like akin to prayer or meditation. The more you practice it, the better you get at it. And there's a lot of different mind-body practices out there. But in hypnotherapy, what we're doing is aligning the conscious, subconscious, and superconscious. So what I mean by that is your conscious mind is that inner chatterbox that's going on all day long. And it may not be helpful chatter, right? It might right. be helpful chatter like, I'm about to have a flare. I know it's coming. I'm not going to be able to work. I can't get on a plane. What am I going to do? All those things that went spinning through my head. I'm on day two of school. I'm going to fall behind. All that unhelpful chitter, chitter, chatter, chatter. In a typical hypnotherapy session, what we want to do is quiet the conscious mind so that we can send high quality information to the subconscious mind, high quality information about your goal, which is to whatever your goal is. In my case, reduce the emotional distress of the pain and the associated downtime um, the lack of control that came with a flare. So that kind of goal gets uh, clarified with your professional hypnotherapist first. It's very client-centered, goal-oriented. We get that goal clear, and then we develop a, a positive belief that, that you can do that. You can take control back of your life and health, for example. That would be a very broad goal, goal that we would narrow down. Uh, but once we do that, we send high quality information. We want to send the belief to your subconscious about your goal because your subconscious is really where the transformation happens. The subconscious, think of it as a storehouse of all your memories and beliefs about yourself, about the world, about others, positive and negative. They may have been put there um, and reified or reinforced when you were a child. Uh, by parental figures, by peers, such as, uh, you know, your, your classmates, uh, your respected authority figure, uh, maybe a clergy member, maybe a teacher. Uh, so they are very, they've been strengthened, right? You might still have things you're hanging on to from childhood uh, about yourself that may be limiting. And what we do is we want to get at those and clear them. We don't erase memories. Uh, we don't replace memories. Think of it, um, your subconscious mind is uh, the part of the iceberg you don't see. So visualize an iceberg. The tip of the iceberg is your conscious mind. We're going to quiet it down and let it rest so it doesn't reject these ideas that we're going to saturate your subconscious mind with. We're going to send high quality information in the form of affirmations or suggestions. I am lovable. I am worthy of healing. We're going to accompany those with visualizations and imagery. Why do we do that? Because the subconscious mind is literal, Lauren. It doesn't think in words. It thinks in pictures. It's the storehouse of all of our memories. And we store our memories in terms of a picture. That's why hypnotherapy sessions always include affirmations about your goal, the suggestions, and imagery about your goal. What's it going to look like when you achieve your goal? 
We run little mental movies to make that very clear. That all has to happen in that very relaxed state of the subconscious mind is open and receptive when we activate the parasympathetic. So what we're doing is learning to calm ourselves, go into that relaxed state. I teach you how to do that, but it's your own mind doing it. You're always in control. And once you're able to open up that receptivity, you're just more open to those affirmations and those ideas. You don't reject them out of hand. Your conscious mind, if we stay in the conscious mind in a hypnotherapy session, and I just tell you, Lauren, uh, when you have a flare, uh, you're totally in control. It'll be no problem. It doesn't matter how much it hurts. You'll be just fine. You don't <laughs> want to reject that, right? You're going to say, right. yeah, right. It hurts and I can't go to work. And then my, what am I going to tell my boss? Because I look fine. In my case, I always kind of looked okay. Um, right. <laughs> except for at the very beginning, I kind of looked a little rough around the edges. But um, you kind of, it's invisible. And that invisible pain doesn't get a lot of support in society. You wear a cast, everybody wants to run up to you and sign it. Uh, oh, yeah. Louder, no one can see it, right? You look fine. Come on, buck up. So you're dealing with that kind of stigma. So all that stuff is in your conscious mind, right? So what we do in a hypnotherapy session is I help coach you to learn how to take yourself into self-hypnosis, that relaxed state. You learn to do it yourself. All hypnosis is self-hypnosis. I'm not doing anything. I'm just a coach. So you're learning to do that and you relax. You're able to activate that helpful physiology, that restful state. Also, you're hearing positive affirmations about your goal and imagery. Okay, so something really neat happens at that point. Now all of a sudden transformation can, can happen because you're clearing away those negative beliefs. Until that happens, a lot of, of emotional stuff has a hard time getting cleared. There's a lot of emotional blocks to healing that we hold. And we can get the best physical therapist, the best urogynecologist, and they can really help us functionally and organically and we need them and we want them but we also have to do that inner work uh, because if you're giving yourself negative limiting beliefs about your ability to heal you'll slow it down uh, potentially very much it, you could potentially heal but it might take a very long time so being able to clear that is typically a very quick transform transformational process when you clear the emotions, a lot of that other stuff, it's like clearing a dam in the river. Now, all of a sudden, things can flow. Now, all of a sudden, the water can clear. So it's very helpful. It worked It worked for me. And I'm, I'm nothing special. I'm nothing unique. Um, I don't have any special brain power over anyone else. But I did um, my self-hypnosis. So what you will learn in a session, in a hypnotherapy session, is you'll learn to go into self-hypnosis so you can do it on your own. You'll um, craft the positive affirmation specific to your goal with me. I'll help you do that. All those words uh, that resonate with you have to come from you. I can't give you affirmations. I can help you craft them so they speak to your subconscious mind. Everyone's unique. Uh, what works for you might not work for me. And your imagery is unique. So what does it look like when you're healed? Where are you? What's happening? What are you doing? Who are you with? Getting very specific. It's like a movie. And then those imagery and affirmations are what you walk away with from a session. They're yours. You write them down. These are the exercises I think you were going to ask me about. So now you've got this set of unique affirmations just for you and unique imagery that your subconscious loves. You take that home with you. You write it out in your own handwriting. That's a mind-body exercise in itself. You post it in your bathroom. You post it in your car. You post it in your office, wherever you want, so that you see it. Practice it twice a day. I'll teach you how to do very easy self-hypnosis in seven to ten minutes a day, twice a day. When you wake up in the morning and before bed, look at your affirmations. Read your affirmations. I will make you custom audio. Any good hypnotherapist will make you custom audios. And you listen to those. This is all the saturation process. You're reprogramming, rewiring your response. So it's completely different. Next time you have a flare, hopefully you won't have one. But if you do, you'll have a lot more resources available. And just knowing that has helped me tremendously, tremendously. So what you're doing um, is you're aligning your conscious with your subconscious. 
That's where transformation happens. The superconscious, where that comes in, that third mind, that's your problem solving ability. So some people think of that as their God mind or their higher self or for me, I'm really connected to nature and I feel that's what I, where I connect to something larger than myself. It's very helpful to have some kind of mindset does not have to be religious, does not have to be spiritual. It's just a feeling of connection to universe or something larger. And what that does, Lauren, is it just helps you feel supported and provides problem solving skills. And that's where you just really get connected and you start seeing solutions instead of problems. And that's really, I think, the real transformation is when you learn to align your conscious, subconscious, and superconscious minds. Then you have the real power of transformation. So it's 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 worked for me. It's worked for many other people. Um, I have clients that have pelvic pain and bladder issues. And it's been incredibly helpful for them too. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds incredible and just kind of goes to the basics of if you put a positive mindset out into the universe, you'll get it back. Um, You know, just changing the way you think about things and kind of your outlook on your future. You know, maybe you might have these symptoms for the rest of your life, but you can't always have this fear and this negativity, um, you know, kind of swarming around you. You're never going to be in a great conscious place. So I think it's just, it's so incredible. It makes me want to do it. (laughs) I definitely want to try this out. I think it can apply to so many different things in our lives. It doesn't just have to be that you have an illness or pain, physical pain, you know, this could be anything, something like you said, from childhood that, you know, still is in your subconscious that still affects you in in your decision making and how you guide your life. You can really get to some of those root causes of just certain ways that you interact and how you handle certain situations. Exactly right. That's exactly right, Lauren, because emotional pain, and this has been studied, you can you can look it up online. <laughs> I've done market research on it too. It's fascinating. Uh, emotional pain hurts. Depression uh, also is causes for a lot of people a lot of pain. So there's studies that show emotional pain can manifest just like physical pain. So, and a lot of people come to me really common with, and, and and probably come to other hypnotherapists as well. Uh, there's something I, you know, I had this traumatic experience and I thought I let it go, but there's still something back there that is keeping me from healing or moving on or letting go. That's a phrase I hear. There's something I'm hanging on to. And I, I think it's related to my fill in the blank condition. If they have one, a lot of people say that. A lot of people say it's stress induced, um, like you had mentioned about um, the particular IC manifestations you have. I hear that all the time. And while I'm sorry for the suffering, it actually gives me hope when I hear it's stress induced because what you're learning in hypnotherapy is how to reduce stress. Some people come to me just for that. They don't have any, um, they might not have a, a painful condition or chronic condition but they know that stress is causing a lot of harm in their life and they just don't know how to get a handle on it. So hypnotherapy, again, all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. I teach you self-hypnosis. You don't need me for the rest of your life. What I love, 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 love about hypnotherapy is it's relatively quick. So it's, you're not going to have a, a, a long-term, typically hypnotherapy hypnotherapist relationship, unless you come back to work on another goal, typical for pain and ailments, which is what I specialize in. I also do other things. Um, But just so you know, uh, four to six sessions is pretty typical. Now for me, that's like, wow, that's fast. I'm a scientist by training. Um, And so being pragmatic and practical and logical is very important to me as well as using the emotional side of my brain. I respect both. Um, so, but I love solutions. Uh, coping is fine, but that's not where I want to land. Um, I want solutions. So a lot of people, um, uh, develop coping mechanisms that just get them by and you need those We're designed. It's for survival to cope, but there's so much more, uh, that you can hope for than cope. 
uh, there's solutions that you can try to find. That's what I try to do. I'm trying to get people to uh, get more to a solution oriented mindset um, so that they're not just living in pain and accepting pain. That, that to me is, um, that's why I want to bring hope. That's my passion is I want to help people in chronic pain with chronic conditions know that they deserve more than coping, that they can move on to actually a higher quality of life, whatever that looks like for them. And one thing I love about the pain strategies, and I've used them again myself, is if I can even reduce the pain, just uh, the pain itself, just talking physical pain from like a, say a six, I would say during a flare, six, seven, uh, with 10 being the worst, if I can get that down even one or two, to me, that's huge. Oh, yeah. Huge. <laughs> Maybe that means I can get on a plane uh, along with whatever medications or recommended treatments from my um, medical provider. Uh, so to me, that's huge. If I can eliminate it, beautiful. If I can change the perception of it, which is something you can do with your own mind, that sh maybe a sharp shooting pain is just unacceptable. But how about a tingle? Could you handle a tingle? And what if we could move it? What if your toe tingled? I've used this myself a lot. When I have nausea, uh, I try to move the nausea into my toe. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. And I, move it and I relocate it. And it's more acceptable to me. Uh, nausea is a particular tough one for me. Uh, some people can hand, handle nausea a lot better than I can. Um, for me, I like to move it around and then it helps me handle it a little bit better. So that, those are all the things you can do with your own mind when it comes to sensations. Um, because again, it, it begins in the brain and you can rewire how you experience pain. And to me, that's super powerful and really helpful. <laughs> I like your point on solutions because I think you know, of course, everybody wants a solution. But I think for inner for people that have interstitial cystitis, there isn't a lot of answers, we feel like we're in the dark a lot. So to go to somebody like yourself and have them tell you that there is a solution, you don't have to just cope with it is so powerful. And just a really incredible technique and method that I think everyone, <laughs> especially with IC, should really look into because I haven't I haven't had that been told to me by anybody yet that there is a potential solution, um, not to cure you and not to eliminate it, but to handle it better, you know, and not just get by every day. That's right. I think it's so important because that is basically what my experience has been going to doctors, here's some pharmaceuticals, here's what you can do to get by. And that for me, that's unacceptable. And I think for many people with IC, that's unacceptable. We want to know if we have to have this for the rest of our life, how can we really truly manage it better and just have a better mindset every day? So I just think this is so incredible. Um, I have one last question for you. And it is, you know, how does how does one go about finding the right hypnotherapist for themselves? You know, where should they begin their search? Okay, so where I would begin is with um, my regulatory board, which is International Board of Hypnotherapy. International Board of Hypnotherapy. If you go to that website, there's a lot of good information and there's a link to find a certified hypnotherapist. The reason why I recommend this is it is my alma mater, uh, the regulatory board for my alma mater, Albuquerque, um, New Mexico is where the hypnotherapy academy is based. And the IBH is our regulatory board. It's very important uh, when you're looking for a hypnotherapist to find one that's regulated by a board, the licensing, there is no licensing in the U.S. Uh, there's not a good regulatory process for hypnotherapists. It's all over the place. So you're going to get um, a spectrum of qualified to unqualified. You just will. Uh, it's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. So this is a legitimate place to begin because we're self-regulated. No one else is really doing it very well. Um, so being self-regulated means someone's watching over that hypnotherapist to make sure they are abiding uh, by ethical standards. Um, in my uh, training, before anyone sees me um, or someone with my training from my school, 
uh, for anything to do with ailments, even weight, weight management, anything to do with the body or ailments, they have to get approval from a, their licensed uh, healthcare provider first. Um, that's very important for client safety. I wouldn't want to see someone uh, for pelvic pain uh, when they haven't seen their urogynecologist, for example. They haven't seen a licensed uh, physical therapist. We don't know what's going on mechanically or functionally. And we want that because as a, a medical hypnotherapist, we use medical informed affirmations. So that's why I'm stressing going to a legitimate uh, school and regulatory board. So we understand what needs to happen on the body. Um, we're not doctors by any means, but we understand at least some of the um, processes that are happening as far as tendons and ligaments that need to loosen and soften. Like in the case of uh, my particular case, they needed to loosen and soften. I can work that into the affirmations. So at that um, website, International Board of Hypnotherapy, you can locate a therapist with training like me and next to their name, it'll say OAB protocol. That's the study. We didn't finish that story, actually. The study proved successful, Lauren. Uh, the, the point of the study was, is hypnotherapy inferior to pharmacotherapy for overactive bladder? The result, no, it's not. What that means is it's just as effective as taking medication. That does not mean don't take your medication. That's just telling you what the study was based on. Um, and at 12 months, uh, for those who were particularly uh, medium to high receptivity on a scale they used uh, for hypnosis, uh, were superior, had superior results, were able to control their bladder conditions uh, better than using pharmacotherapy. It's a very interesting study. You'll find the link, uh, I believe, on the IBH as well. And um, that's where you can locate a hypnotherapist with my training in your state. Uh, now, with COVID, I have gone, and many others, you'll find this, have probably gone 100% digital too for safety. Uh, most of my clients are high risk. Right. Um, I have a client, you know, 20 minutes away, she doesn't, doesn't want to come in. So um, I, I've chosen to, uh, to go 100% digital, at least for now. Um, so, you know, inquire. Uh, there are some state to state restrictions. Um, so you need to, you need to check into that as well. Um, but the, the easiest thing to do is find a hypnotherapist if you can, um, in your state, if you, it's really important you, for you to do in person, then you'll have to discuss that, how to do that safely right now. Um, uh, but so, you know, remote, uh, hypnotherapy, I have found it just anecdotally, and I know from others and my classmates, just as effective. It's very effective. Uh, and I've used it successfully. I was remote, um, offered remote well before COVID. It was really important for me to offer that because of my own experience with ICBPS and being uh, trapped at home uh, next to a toilet. How in the world was I going to get to sessions? Absolutely. <laughs> it was it was challenging because I, I did have to go to the office um, during that flare. Uh, but he got me calmed down so quickly um, that it was just fine. Uh, but I like the remote option. So definitely inquire uh, about that. Uh, I can see where this type of work and this type of therapy can definitely be done virtually. So it's great that you, you know, jumped on board well ahead of COVID, you know, you got to yes. always innovate and stay ahead. So yes. it's great that there's that option because yeah, for many of us, we are, we're stuck at home, we're stuck in bed, we're not feeling very good. You know, we're dizzy, we're nauseated. You know, there's so many things that can keep us from wanting to operate a vehicle and, and go to an appointment. So it's great that that's really coming out, even with, you know, physician care, all, all the telehealth uh, visits that are becoming more in use now. So I think it's just incredible what's happening and how we can use technology to really help everyone and still continue to give that type of care and support. So Audrey, I really appreciate you going into detail about what uh, hypnotherapy is and your personal background with IC and kind of how a session is outlined. So I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome so much. Thank you for having me. And I'll just leave you with this parting thought that all, all hypnotherapy is self-hypnosis. It's your own mind 
Uh, there are myths out there. No one can control you. That's a Hollywood um, silliness that makes for a good, fun movie. Um, but you are always in control. No one can control your mind. If they could, we wouldn't need Weight Watchers. We wouldn't need New Year's resolutions, right? Right. <laughs> it's all your own mind. You're in control. People love that. Yeah, 100%. I'm really glad you brought that up because I think there has uh, always been some skepticism around what hypnotherapy is. So again, thank you so much. And I also want to thank my audience for taking the time to listen to the Bladder Battle podcast special series, I See in the Dark. Make sure to subscribe if you're listening on YouTube or leave a rating or review on Spotify, Google, or Apple Podcasts. And stay tuned for the next episode right here on the Bladder Battle Podcast. <laughs>